Hello and welcome to tonight's Valuable Elite Sports Roundup. We're going to cover a ton of news. Um, the dominoes have fallen in the LPL. A lot of teams officially announcing their rosters, contracts going into the uh, global contract database. So now we can finally talk about these things because rumors are what they are. So um, a lot of interesting moves. I mean, hell, Rare Adam completely announces their team essentially. And then I even have a second board to go over. So, uh, first things first, we'll go over Weibo and um, how they have changed their second place team. Uh, the Shy, I mean, so the deal is Weibo kind of forced their players' hands, and I mean, there are rumors that they can't even pay them their bonuses, but um, outside of that, um, Weibo are trying to make players take pay cuts, and frankly, it's not going to work. The Shy is out. Um, Weiwei has left and, uh, the bot side's still there as well as Xiaohu, but ZDZ has joined as well as Zhao Hao from Anyone's Legend. So ZDZ had some good games for Anyone's Legend and then he had some int games. Um, very coin flippy up there. Um, very poor man's the shy, if you will. Um, died a lot, 1.9 KDA, 8 CS per minute, 50 KP. That is the epitome of average when it comes to CS and KP, but... Dying a lot. Uh, 368 gold per minute. It's about 21.5% of gold. 471 damage per minute was 23.4% of damage. And 18 champions in 80 games. So he did have a wide champion pool with AL last year. And then there's Zhao Hao, who had a great summer. Um, he appeared on my underrated players video. Um, I thought he was a player to be targeted by the top teams in the LPL. And Weibo was one of the top teams last year. So I do think Zhao Hao will replace Weiwei just fine. Uh, 3 KDA, 5 6 CS per minute, 76 8 KP. Over 3 out of every 4 kills for anyone's legend last year, Zhao Hao was involved in. He was extremely dominant on the Lee Sin. Um, 333 gold per minute was 19.5% of gold. 325 damage per minute, 16% of damage. 15 champions in 80 games. It got to the point actually with that Lee Sin that it was like, uh, you must ban it. And I talked to somebody on the Discord uh, last night or the night before about must bans and how I don't agree with them. Um, so that's a thing. Uh, but people just kept giving him Lee Sin and he would carry on it. Now, anyone's legend didn't win a lot of games regardless, but you know, you don't need to create an issue. You know, you don't need to give them a, an opportunity uh, by giving the Lee Sin. So. Um, that's something to watch. RNG have signed world champion 80 carry LWX. LWX is free from FPX. Um, so RNG have a pretty damn good roster if Tang Wan can take the next step because Ming came back um, to play with LWX. So um, Tang Wan was a young player, rookie player for them last year. We'll talk about obviously these teams and team previews over the next month. But um, RNG is, is looking pretty good. So 3 KDA, 9.8 CS per minute, 71.7 KP, solid numbers. 441 damage, uh, gold per minute was 25% of gold. 588 damage per minute, 29% of damage. And he had 13 champions played in 76 games. FPX was not very good, but LWX really wasn't the issue. I thought Chow Chow did well alongside him also. Um, so playing with Ming is going to be a step up for him. It's the, it's the best support he's ever played with. So, with that in mind, I do think that it's going to be, um, you know, the future is bright for RNG this year, which is really weird to say. LNG, Tarzan was allowed to leave. Um, he was not a free agent. Um, Tarzan, I, my top fives video, which a lot of people got pissy uh, about. Um, Tarzan, I do think, is an excellent jungler, one of the best in the world. Um, just because he played bad at Worlds does not eliminate the other, what, he played 118 games, so the other 100 games of the year. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to take 9% of his season and label him off of 9%. I think that's ridiculous. So, 4-7 KDA, 5-1 CS per minute, 73-8 KP, pure facilitator. Um, he made things happen for LNG. 335 gold per minute, 18% of gold, 327 damage per minute, 14.4% of damage, 17 champions in 118 games. He's replaced by Weiwei, Weibo's jungler. So Weiwei, similar numbers, 4 KDA, 52 CS per minute, 72 KP, 336 gold, 289 damage, 18% of gold, 13% of damage. So just slightly less damage than Tarzan. Um, 13 champions in 76 games. You do have to take into account that Tarzan's numbers do include spring. 
where Wei Wei did, 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 did not because Wei Wei was not on a team. He was unemployed. So um, we'll see how LNG does with that because now you don't have Tarzan Scout Synergy. You have Wei Wei alongside Scout. Um, Mark was brought in at support to compete with Hung. Mark played with top esports last year. I think he gets more heat than he deserves. Um, 4-3 KDA, 75-5 KP, 154 uh, damage per minute, 16 champions in 103 games. You're alongside one of the best AD carries in the world, but at the same time, Jackie can have his int moments. Um, and frankly, Mark couldn't cover for those. So that's kind of the drawback of, for Mark. But I do think he is, he's fine. Um, he's more than fine alongside Gala. I wouldn't be shocked if he took the job from Hung. Crescent is the coach. Crescent was a longtime top esports coach. 129, 102, and 7 in um, the regular season. 61 and 45. That's individual games in playoffs or regional finals. And then at Worlds, 12 and 9. BLG have announced that they brought in Knight. So Knight. Obviously, in my top fives video, I did uh, take a little bit of a deduction in my mind because he doesn't play Azir and literally refused to play Azir. So who they find at coach will be interesting because I do believe they have not found one yet um, because Tabe and them are having negotiations and it's taking a while. 5-4 um, KDA, 8-7 CS per minute, 66-9 KP. 433 gold per minute, which is 22% of gold. 634 damage per minute, 26% of damage. He and Ruler kind of uh, traded carry rolls on that team for the most part. But the damage spread on JDG was very even. Um, 26 is like the highest. And with that mind, and 22 champions, 124 games. Um, JDG, of course, best team of 2023. They are the team of the year for me. Um, so we'll see how he does with BLG. BLG are a different animal, um, with Ben and Shun. Those players are not, um, Shun can play like Kanavi, I guess. Um, but Ben cannot play like 369. That's a stylistical difference, champion pool difference. And with that, Knight has to take on a different role. Um, and I don't know if Knight has it in him so that's going to be interesting to look at lamau was brought in to compete with on at the support position 3-4 kda 67 7 kp 143 damage per minute 12 champions 42 games he played with rng last year rare adam have made uh several moves so they brought in uh the rest of their team so they, they're keeping xiaoju and asum in top and ad carry nayu is going to be a rookie jungler next year. He played with Top Esports. He was in my prospects video. Um, 4 to 6 KDA, 6 1 KP, 75 7 KP. Keep in mind these are LDL numbers, so it is at a lower level of play, but he was dominant at that level. 386 gold per minute, 20% of the team's gold, which is a lot of gold for a jungler. 425 damage per minute, 17 champions in 97 games. So, um, we're already seeing what um, a possible Rookie of the Year candidate will be this year. Vikla, um, who played with FlyQuest last year and KT in 2022, a very young player, um, struggled with Fly, to say the very least. He, he was disappointing. Um, 2.8 KDA, 8.4 CS per minute, 68.2 KP, so below average numbers. 406 uh, gold per minute is 22.5% of gold. 616 damage per minute, 28.3% of damage. He did find a way to deal damage, though. So you could wonder, oh, if you only had gotten more resources, if you'd only found a way to get more farm, you would have dealt more damage. But being a facilitator, that's going to come with the territory, right? You're going to find damage simply by being involved. Um, I will say concerning LCS mids, he was behind on average at 15 minutes, 70 gold. 4 CS, 20 XP, and people say, but that's not a lot. And it's like, yeah, but the LCS is not the LPL. So now he's going to be in the LPL, and he's going to have to play really damn good mid laners, and what's going to happen, right? So he has to take the next step in his development alongside a rookie jungler. 15 solo kills, 13 champions, and 47 games. Um, at the support position, they brought back uh, Zora and signed Chausey. Chausey. Played with, um, shoot, Ultra Prime in 2022. And then this past year played with CFO, Flying Oyster, and the PCS. 3-3 KDA, 75-6 KP, 138 
damage per minute. So very good alongside Shun on that CFO squad. 354 vision score per minute would place almost um, two wards every minute. So very active in the vision game. Um, over three control wards every five minutes. Cleared two wards every five minutes. Only seven champions in 48 games. Um, some concerning stuff there, right? I mean, he had a good vision score, but he also put down a shit ton of wards and used up a lot of gold and only had seven champions played. So, um, you know, shouts he's been in the LPL before. He's going to have to um, step it up. He can't just be wasting gold and barely playing any champions and being predictable in that manner. Um, speaking of that, he's going to have to step it up because Zora was brought back. Um, he played with Rare Adam in 2022 and then played with Anyone's Legend this past year. Uh, 2 3 KDA, 71 6 KP. Anyone's Legend, frankly, was, was not very good. Going back and forth between two different um, AD carries. Uh, 127 damage per minute, 12 champions, 39 games. Shine is the coach. Shine was DRX's coach last couple of years. Well, not. He was on the staff, he was not the head coach. Um, 28 and 42, 0 and 6. Um, he was not on the staff when they went to Worlds, so he's not getting credited with that on here. Wasn't credited with it on Leaguepedia, so maybe they left him at home. Um, to kind of just give you an, uh, an idea of how, I don't want to say he's in value, uh, his, his value lacked on the squad, but I think it does go to show like, okay, they brought a different coach or different assistant or something like that. So 0 and 6, um, this past year strive uh was let go so strive was still under contract mid laner has a lot of potential but did lose his job to mole at times uh, they did bring in competition and frankly i'm not a big mole fan i think he sucks so for them to do that to strive was unfortunate so strive's a free agent 39 kda 83 cs per minute 69 6 kp so um very similar to vikla's numbers except he didn't die as much 383 Gold per minute, 21.4% of gold. Uh, 514 damage per minute. Did not deal a lot of damage. It's That's a problem. 24.4% of damage. So Rare Adam finding damage from Zhao Zhu. Finding damage from Leanne last year. Um, 14 champions in 68 games. So he'll have to, with a change of scenery, kind of get better, if you will. So that's it for this board. Now on to the next one. All right. So, uh Four more LPL teams. We have Thunder Talk brought in two supports to play alongside 1XN. We have Chow Chow uh, played with FPX last year. Like I said, with the LWX part, I thought Chow Chow did fine. Um, 3-2 KDA, 77, 1 KP, 151 damage per minute. 16 champions in 61 games. Actually, it was in my underrated video also. I think that he, he did very well. Now, I don't think he's going to start for Thunder Talk, and this is why. So they bring in Feather. Feather played with 1XN with, with in um, JDG's system last year um, in, in spring, and they both got opportunities on the main stage uh, with separate teams. They were separated. Now they're back together. I imagine Thunder Talk are going to give that a go first. 2-3 KDA, 71-9 KP with Rare Adam, who he just went over last year, or, well, this year. 140 uh, damage per minute, 10 champions, 28 games. No name is the coach. Well, no name was, um, no name is out as a coach. I don't know if Juicy took the job um, because there's other assistants still on that staff. But no name had a 41, 70, and 7 record as a coach and is 3 and 9 um, in uh, playoffs in regional finals. So he is unemployed. Speaking of coaches, IG have brought in Long. Long is 52 and 90 as a head coach or on staff. Sorry, the, keep in mind, this is not head coach exactly. Like, they got the head coach job. But these um, records are based on what a person gets credit for on Leaguepedia. If they're an assistant, if they're a valuable enough assistant to end up on Leaguepedia as uh, being a member of the staff that year um, in the tournament results. That's where I'm including them. So 52 and 90 and 6 and 11 in the playoffs or regional finals. Top esports. This is probably, I would say, outside of night, this is the biggest move. Uh, Mako is with top esports. And this honestly is um, probably a very sad move. You know, we have a couple EDG fans, uh, super fans, if you will, in the Discord. Um, you know, it's 
it sucks to see a player like a franchise player leave. Mako is, I mean, I made that video about Zhao Hu being maybe the greatest Chinese player of all time. Uh, Mako's in that conversation for a reason. He's been the face of EDG um, with Scout prior to that, uh, prior to this year for, you know, ever. And for this to happen, you know, it, it had to happen eventually. I'm sure many EDG fans wanted him to retire with EDG, um, but... He has left um, and, and went to top esports to play Jackie Love. Um, 3 1 KDA, 76 3 KP, 300 damage per, I'm sorry, 200 damage per minute. 19 champions, 114 games. He was my pick in spring, I believe, for um, MVP, um, or was at least in that conversation. Um, I think Mako's excellent. I think he's one of the best supports in the world. He's in my top fives video for a reason. Um, and being alongside Jackie Love, top esports. Like, the thing is, like, top are really clearly, um, they're going to play one way. Um, now, I think that way, and given the fact that their players are so good, that that team could end up going to, to world. Um, now, at Worlds, it's a different story because we can see how they're best suited to play, and that becomes patch dependent and things like that. But I think this team is, is going to be disgusting. Anyone's legend, lastly. So... They bring in Harry, uh, talk about him in my rookie top laner video as well. Um, that's going to come out um, t tomorrow. 2 KDA, 8 2 CS per minute, 56 6 KP. These numbers aren't great, but when you watch that video tomorrow, you're going to see that most rookies kind of are around these numbers. 372 gold per minute is 21.7% of gold. 464 damage per minute, 23.7% of damage. 16 champions in 75 games. Ultra Prime was not great, so... To blame Harry for that, yeah, I think the whole team kind of sucked. But, um, you know, they brought him in. Uh, it's, you, you, you went cheap on the top side, if you will. Okay, um, and I can see why they brought in Krakow, because they bring in Joker. Joker wants Krakow. It's just, uh, you know, how much money do we have left? Okay, well, we need a top laner. Let's go find one for that much money. So, Krakow brought in uh, these numbers with DRX last year. He sucked. Um, Juhan was taking his job at times. Um, DRX was not good, though. I mean, we do have to be honest about that as well. 2-1 KDA, 5-1 CS per minute, 71-6 KP. Died a lot. Um, tried to facilitate, and then would just go in and die. 308 gold per minute, 18% of gold. 310 damage per minute, almost 15% of damage, which is nice. So the return on investment's there. However, at 15 minutes, he was behind 335 gold, 7 CS, 245 XP. Three solo kills and 15 champions in 60 games this past year. So, Krako, they brought him in because of Joker. Um, they've got Shanks, they've got Prince, but... No, they got Shanks, they have Hope. Um, but Harry and Krako on the top side is ugly. Um, Kale. Kale is really, really good. Um, he was in my top five video not too long ago. I think he was in my, my one previous or last year. Um, one of the youngest supports in the world and is excellent. A lot of people giving him crap, um, but he played with three different eight, uh, supports the last four splits um, and I think is as talented as, as hell. So uh, 3 KDA, 73, 7 KP, 177 damage per minute. Put up a 3.4 vision score per minute. Placing 8 wards. Um, kind of goes to show you how Chelsea, um looked. So about uh, 8 wards every 5 minutes. Um, two, 3 control wards every 5 minutes. Clears 2 wards every 5 minutes. 24 champions. A champion ocean in 91 games. Um, Cal is going to surprise a lot of people that don't give him the credit he deserves because he was on Live Sandbox. Being alongside Hope, that bot lane is going to be nasty, um, and it's going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, people are going to be like, oh, wow, this bot lane looks really good. I didn't expect that. I'm telling you now, I expect it to be good. Now, if it doesn't end up being good, I made this video, and I said it, and I, I don't really care, but at the same time, that's what I think is going to happen. Lastly, Joker. Uh, is is the coach. So Joker was with IG last year, was with Lyft Sandbox prior, like I've said a couple times. 48 and 58 in the regular season and best of threes, 8 and 16 individual games in the playoffs or regional finals. So 
um, brought in a Korean coach with a couple uh, former players, and we have, um, you know, Shanks and Hope. So uh, we'll see how that team does. Uh, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And I hope to see you again tomorrow.